Morning everyone, welcome uh, to morning prayer on the 20th of July 2020. Um, this is week 18 of morning prayer I think or something along those lines and uh, it's great to be praying with you once uh, once again on this Monday morning. I hope you found an order of service, uh, it was either emailed to you or you can download it on the live stream page and as always let's just Settle ourselves into the Lord's presence and then I'll lead us uh, in just a moment. As always, please join in the words in bold. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old, and endures forever on those who fear him and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Come to the Word of God, and this week we're reading Psalm 125. Uh, as always, let's say the refrain and psalm together. So Psalm 125. Glorious things are spoken of you, Zion, city of our God. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast for ever. As the hills stand about Jerusalem, so the Lord stands round about his people, from this time forth for evermore. The sceptre of wickedness shall not hold sway, over the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous turn their hands to evil. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are true of heart. Those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord shall take away with the evildoers. But let there be peace upon Israel. Glorious things are spoken of you, Zion, city of our God. God of power, you are strong to save, and you never fail those who trust in you. Keep us under your protection and spread abroad your reign of peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. If you have a Bible to hand, do you grab it, otherwise... Uh, Feel free to listen along. Um, our first reading is from the book of 1 Samuel, uh, chapter 5. And we've been following through 1 Samuel. And the Philistines have, um, who were uh, at war with Israel, have come and taken the Ark of God. And we'll see uh, what happens as a result. 1 Samuel, chapter 5. 
After the Philistines captured the Ark of God, they took it from the battleground at uh, Ebenezer to the town of Ashdod. They carried the Ark of God into the temple of Dagon and placed it beside an idol of Dagon. But when the citizens of Ashdod went to see it in the, uh, the next morning, Dagon had fallen with his face to the ground in front of the Ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and put him in his place again. But the next morning the same thing happened. Dagon had fallen face down before the Ark of the Lord again. This time his head and hands had broken off and were lying in the doorway. Only the trunk of his body was left intact. That is why to this day neither the priests of Dagon nor anyone who enters the temple of Dagon in Ashdod will step on its threshold. Then the Lord's heavy hand struck the people of Ashdod and the nearby villages with a plague of tumours. When the people realised what was happening, they cried out, We can't keep the ark of the God of Israel here any longer. He is against us. We will all be destroyed along with Dagon, our God. So they called together the rulers of the Philistine towns and asked, What should we do with the ark of the God of Israel? The rulers discussed and replied, Move it to the town of Gath. So they moved the ark of the God of Israel to Gath. But when the ark arrived at Gath, the Lord's heavy hand fell on its men young and old. He struck them with a plague of tumours and there was a great panic. So they sent the Ark of God to the town of Ekron. But when the people of Ekron saw it coming, they cried out, They're bringing the Ark of the God of Israel here to kill us too. The people summoned the Philistine rulers again and begged them, Please send the Ark of the God of Israel back to its own country, or it will kill us all. For the deadly plague from God has al- had already begun, and great fear was sweeping across the town. Those who didn't die were afflicted with tumours, and the cry from the town rose to heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, chapter 20, beginning at verse 41. Luke 20, beginning at verse 41, and we're reading through to verse 4 of chapter 21. So Luke 20, beginning at verse 41. Then Jesus presented them with a question. Why is it, he asked, that the Messiah is said to be the son of David? For David himself wrote in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit in the place of honour at my right hand, until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. Since David called the Messiah Lord, how can the Messiah be his son? Then the crowds listened. Then... With the crowds listening, he turned to his disciples and said, Beware of these teachers of religious law, for they like to parade around in flowing robes and love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces, and how they love the seats of honour in the synagogues and the head table at banquets. Yet they shamelessly cheat widows out of their property and then pretend to be pious by making long prayers in public. Because of this, they will be severely punished. While Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts in the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them, for they have given a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our gospel canticle. Let's say the refrain and canticle together. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. 
This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have set us free to worship you without fear holy and righteous in your sight. Well, we come now to pray. And I'll lead us, and as always, I'll end each section with Lord in your mercy. And feel free to respond with, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you as our holy, sovereign, mighty Lord. You are the King of heaven and earth and are working all things out for your glory. Thank you that we, we thank you that we can trust you. Pray that you would give us humble hearts before you. And remember uh, who you are. Father, we think of that first reading from the book of 1 Samuel where your people weren't being faithful that they were defeated and the ark was taken. And yet when it was, you, even then, on your own, re-established yourself as the one true God. And so, Father, we thank you that we can know you. And pray that we would have humble hearts before you. But we thank you so much that we can approach you without fear because of all your son has done. That through faith we can approach you without fear and worship you and know you and love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray that you would give us humble hearts. Your word tells us that Jesus, even though he was fully God, took on the role of a servant and served us, even going to death on a cross for us so that we might have life. Father, forgive us our pride and help us to heed the words of Jesus that we wouldn't seek our own honour, but that we would be humble and seek the good of others, that we wouldn't hold on too tightly to the things of this life, but that we would be generous with the things that you have given us, knowing that uh, a generous spirit is one that pleases you. And so, Father, this week we pray that you would help us to walk closely with you, remembering who you are, and that we would have humble, kind hearts that reflect the love of our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you that we were able to gather in our buildings yesterday And we look forward to, over the coming weeks, uh, to have an opportunity to see uh, all of our church family, or at least all those who are able to come at the moment. We thank you for that time together. And we pray that you would continue to encourage us, that as we gather together as your people, as we pray, 
as we sit under your word, as we trust in your presence with us, that we would be optimistic that you will be at work in our lives. And Father, we pray that you would show us uh, how you are calling us to live as your people at the moment. Help us to, to live out the calling that you have for each one of us. Help us to be receptive to your call and to be confident in serving you, even in these times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we continue to pray for our leaders and their decisions. We pray that you would bless them and help them. That you would help them to know how to to guide and steer uh, this country in a way that will uh, bring about good for those who live here. But Father, as we always pray, Lord, we know that we are not promised comfort in this life, but we are promised a, a heavenly inheritance, a future with you. And so as we live day to day, we pray that you would give us a renewed sense of the hope that we have in your Son. A hope that is secure and does not perish, fade or spoil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we lift up to you now those we know who are struggling at this time. Let's spend a moment bringing to mind anyone we know who's going through a hard time at the moment. Father, we lift up those we know and love to you for your help for your healing hand, for your strength, for your comfort. And as always, we pray that you would show us how we can best help them in this time. Please direct their hearts to the hope of your Son. May they rest their hope in him. Father, we continue to think of those and pray for those who still yet cannot return to, to anything even close to, to normality. To those who are unwell, to those who for whatever reason need to isolate, to those who are, who are lonely, we pray that you would reveal your, your loving kindness to them, that you would provide for them and again we pray that as your people the church that you would help us to reach out in love to those we live amongst to tell them about the good news of Jesus and to love them as we are called to love our neighbour Lord in your mercy hear our prayer And we continue with the Lord's Prayer, um, with the Collect Prayer for today. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. 
Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great, well thanks for coming to pray uh, this morning or uh, at some point during the day. Uh, we'll be back to pray on Wednesday morning at nine o'clock. And uh, just a reminder, as I as I mentioned in the prayers, that our buildings are now open for public worship again. We're having one service um, at both churches, 9.15 in Nutley, 11.15 in Maresfield. Um, if you've heard from Angie and haven't yet replied about when you'd like to start coming again, uh, can I encourage you to, to let her know so that we can um, sort of... Uh, um, book you in as it were for a Sunday we're having to we're keeping some spaces free for visitors but also trying to sort of uh, ensure that um, everyone has an equal opportunity to come but we'd be great to hear from you uh, and if you haven't heard from Andy or I uh, do get in touch and let us know uh, if you'd like to come and you can find our contact details uh, on the website so I hope you have a good week uh, that you know the Lord's blessings. And I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless. And bye for now.